Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. Hope you're happy, healthy and well. It is time for a new book review today and today I have the pleasure of sharing what I thought and my life lessons out of the book Nailing It, Tales from the Comedy Frontier by Rich Hall. This is his latest book. It was published in 2022. It is all about the stories where he had to nail the performance in front of an audience. Uh, he's a comedian. You may or may not know him, especially if you're in the UK or America, you might know him. He has done various comedy uh, routines and various performances. He's performed in front of royalty. He's performed in front of a funeral parlor. You name it. He everything in between he has done. This guy is a prolific, prolific entertainer, performer, comedian, someone who really makes you think, and someone who shows I have seen all of them every time he comes out to Melbourne, I'm there in the audience watching and laughing. You're probably thinking, so why did you read Ritual? Is it because you like him as a comedian? Yeah, sure. I really enjoy his comedy. I love the the type of comedy that he does, which is a mix of the comedy that makes you think, the comedy that is deadpan, very dry, as soon as he says something, like there's a split second before you go, oh, that's good, that's really funny. And uh, it's that split second that I like. He's someone who makes you think. He's someone who I believe is extremely well read. Probably someone who I would say can understand the human psyche simply because he has been and immersed himself with all sorts of different people. He kind of strikes me as someone who kind of sucks in the vibe of the room and people, so that makes a good comedian. So Rich Hall talks about, it's a collection of his different stories throughout his life where he had to nail the performance and actually perform. One of the biggest lessons for me in this book and every book that I read, it's all about what do I glean from the book and you know, how can I compare it to my life? He's a completely different person, obviously, to what I do. Showed me how some people can do certain things in their life. There would be no way I'd be a comedian simply because I can't stand improvisation. I'm a planner. I drive desks. I do all the boring bat shit. I'm the one who actually throws money at these comedians at night at performances just so I could get over my day job. And I say that because there is a quote, he says he, a Texas musician by the name of Ray Wiley Hubbard once explained via verse that there's two kinds of people in the world, the day people and the night people. I'm a day person. And it's the night people's job to get the day people's money. And I had to laugh at that because it's so true. Every time that there is a comedy show in Melbourne, we have a comedy festival. I'm out there, I'm watching the shows, I love it. I, the only time I seem to get out of my house at night is to go see a performance somewhere. That's about it. Other times I'm just inside like a mushroom. The mushrooms. Anyway, yeah, and I want to be entertained because of the dreary existence of the corporate life. Next question you're probably thinking, well, why read Rich Hall? You know, if it's not just for the comedy, why did you read him? Well, you know, I have been reading a whole heap of very heavy books on this channel. Before I read Rich Hall, I had been reading a couple of very heavy tomes. I needed to have a bit of a mind break. Now, before Rich Hall, I read a Russian author, Yevgeny Zamyatin. He wrote this book, We, in 1921, about a dystopian panopticon society under mass surveillance. Yeah, this was really heavy going. But before this, I read The House of the Dead by Dostoevsky on his experience in a Siberian jail. So after these books, you could have guessed my my mind were, needed a break. It needed a bit of a laugh. So I thought, right, I'll pull out Rich Hall, which was a gift that I had given to my husband, but he hasn't read it yet. So I thought, I really need something light. I really need something that doesn't require a lot of brain power. Famous last words was the best thing I had read. And this really hit the mark for me because it was a collection of his stories and I got to know more about how he got into comedy, the different stories and different types of people he met. But some of my own lessons out of the, his own experience is that I thought to myself, shit, I work differently to that. And it's just always interesting to read about other people's experiences and how they get into their profession. What are some of those 
I guess the life lessons for me that I learned from Rich Hall. Now, one of the big things in this book is his stories seem to be all about improvisation. He seems to be the person, and I guess that that's what makes a good comedian, someone who improvises, someone who can actually immerse himself into the life around him, someone who's not fearful of speaking to anyone and everyone, someone going with the flow, someone who doesn't plan things to the nth degree. I'm a planner to the nth degree. And so some of the things that he wrote in here, I thought to myself, there is no way I would go up on a stage and just improvise a performance. There is no way I would completely immerse myself and actually do a presentation in front of a funeral or write a song in front of a funeral situation. It's just reading this, there was some elements I thought, oh my God, like it requires a person who are very, with a very strong constitution to be able to do this, to be able to just do things on the fly and then make them work. He talks about stories of the people that he met. One uh, person he talked about, General Custer, who would be this this Vietnam vet who would sing Kondo 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 dressed up as General Custer and just the way Rich Hall writes and if you know his comedy you'll know what I'm talking about here very it's funny he uses metaphors a lot just the way he explains things are just hilarious you know the people that he met along the way the people who gave him opportunities the people that he worked with all makes for some rollicking good stories. What are some other lessons that I learned? The second lesson, I guess, was I wasn't aware of his life. I'm not someone who really kind of stooped. I don't care if people have got a social media account. I don't get on their accounts. I just want to be entertained. So, you know, when I go to Rich Hall's shows when he's down in Melbourne, I want to have a laugh. I want to just kind of escape for a little while uh, and enjoy myself. I thought, okay, let's look him up on Wikipedia. And I read his Wikipedia page and it, there is a, like, it's like War and Peace. It's massive. The guy is prolific. He's done a lot of performances. He's written a whole heap of books. He's a musician as well. Uh, comedian, he's been in movies, you name it. He's done a whole heap of things. And that just shows to me that he's a craftsperson. He is an artist. He is someone who loves what he does and loves his performances and obviously loves people enough to be able to immerse and actually ask him a whole heap of questions and get to understand them and then somehow wangle that into his routine. His humour is really smart and that's what I love. It's it's like I mentioned before, it's the kind of humour that he says something and it requires you for a split second to think about it because there's a level of depth to his humour. The, the lesson that I learnt also was he must be uh, well read because in this book he also mentioned that, you know, during one of his travels he went and bought a couple of books and he went and bought a book by Edith Wharton and a book I think he talked about, uh, Hunter S. Thompson, mentioned Proust, he mentioned Proust and oh my god he mentioned Pynchon, Gravity's Rainbow, who in what comedian actually mentions books like this? So my, uh, my eyes got widened at that point thinking oh my god he's, he's well read he's my kind of man next lesson that i learned was that in the very last chapter he pulls it all together with some reflections about comedians today i must admit that the type of comedy that i like are all I guess of his genre and before. I'm a huge Bill Bailey fan, I'm a huge fan of the UK, English, the British comedy. I'm a huge fan of comedy that makes you think. He pulled some bits and some reflections that he had in the last chapter about what comedy is missing nowadays which uh, I totally agree with. He's someone who obviously he's a performer so a lot of his work he does at night and I thought to myself shit Helen you you haven't been out there at night there's a lot of things that me as a day person as a person who doesn't need to be out at night all the time I'm missing so a lot of the things I started thinking about is that I have a whole life that I've missed <laughs> PM aspect that I've missed in my life simply because I seem to survive just in daylight hours. Come early evening, I'm there with a book, nailing it, or we, a book of the dead, 
and I'm reading to the early hours and that's it that's what I do that's my life and that's what how I was like even when I was young so I've missed a lot of things and so ritual made me think about the fact that there is a whole life of a nightlife of characters of situations of people that I have probably never met and are probably different probably never will because I won't be out there but one of my most favorite stories of this book was when he recounted the time he performed in front of a funeral performed a song all about the demon drink of Bundaberg rum for those of you who don't know Bundaberg rum is a very typical Australian drink but when I say typical Australian drink there's only a certain breed of people who wear it and I'm wearing my most favorite flannelette shirt today. I'm not wearing my Metallica or heavy metal t-shirt or anything like that. But uh, Bundaberg rum is kind of like has, let's just say, it's a certain type of people who drink Bundaberg rum or Bundy as we call it here. As I was reading the story, I was cracking up. I could just imagine this rowdy, denim wearing, flannelette wearing, people at a funeral tossing back their Bundys, getting pissed and him trying to perform this song all about Bundaberg rum. And then I thought to myself, shit Helen, you're an Australian. Have you tasted Bundaberg rum? No, I have not. I have never tasted Bundaberg rum, believe it or not. I'm a G&T type of person, snob. So I went down to my bottle -o, or Australian bottle -o is the liquor store, and I bought one can, one can of uh, Bundaberg rum, and the guy behind the counter just kind of, he knows me because I buy my red wine from there. He just did the eyebrow thing, and I said, yep, mate, I'm releasing my inner feral today. And I thought, I'm going to try this on camera. This is the first time I've tasted Bundberg rum. It's pretty cold. It is, it was established apparently in 1888. People get actually sloshed on this. And when they get sloshed on it, they go feral and they have fights. You don't want to be around people who have never been sloshed on Bundy's. Because it's damn liquid venom. It's from a demon So here we go. <gasps> okay. What's it smell like? Oh. <clears throat> it smells sweet. Okay, here goes. Cheers, Bundy. I'm doing this so you could see the Bundaberg rum, but they haven't done the hot. They should have actually had the whole here. It's not very conducive for people who want to take video footage because we go on this and anyway, enough talk. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's sweet. And then it has this kind of metallic taste. Oh, that is that. <coughs> is it supposed to be this flat? It feels like it's flat. I could just feel it collecting it. <coughs> it's like glu it's like it drinking a very heavy glucose or something. It's really sweet. It's actually not bad. Oh, that tastes like a band-aid. <coughs> okay, some bits taste like sweet and some bits taste like your liquid band-aid. I think I'm going to leave it aside. I've tasted Bundberg rum. Okay, so there you go. <coughs> I think I need water. Okay. Enough of that. <laughs> Thank you, Rich Hall, for some of the life lessons here in this book, nailing it. <coughs> I highly recommend this book. If you want a laugh, then please do yourself a favor and go and read this book. Hilarious book, one that is well worth your time to read. Thank you for listening <clears throat> and thank you for watching. Bye for now. <clears throat> oh shit. <coughs> I just realized something. The book color matches the Bundy rum. <laughs> okay. <laughs>